doing like eight million a year. Yeah, I've been I've been doing business since 2016. Um, first year did six. I've been averaging that around that amount. Um, I think the highest I got was 21. I did 13. Um, 13 million. But then uh, you know, it's just been consistent, and I'm I'm trying to break out. You know, and um, you know, I'm just just trying to implement everything that um you know taking things what you say and implementing them um the calls they've helped a lot um to be honest so um but it's just the 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 time block and the scheduling that that's really you know that's i think it's my issue cuz you get so busy with your current deals that you're like all right i got to do this now cuz you know that's what's going to get us paid so i'm trying to just schedule my day like you say you know uh-huh. So yeah. um, since December, since you said, you know, we have three weeks of just straight business to get to, um, that's what I've been doing, like from nine to 12, just banging out calls. How big is your database? So that's another thing. I I, I really haven't, you know, yeah. I have all these emails, I have all these phone numbers, but they're not together. Uh-huh. You know? Now, why do you think I asked you that? Um, For the weekly email. No, you can contact. No. no, I mean that's part of it, but I know I knew exactly when you told me that you're you did 13 million this year and you did eight million this year and you did six million and it's not consistent and stuff like that. As soon as you tell me that, I know immediately what the problem is. It's not time blocking. It's not um you know getting your calls in and all that stuff. You're already you've already done the business. You already have the database. Um, you're just not utilizing the database. These people are slowly forgetting who you are. I mean, until you take a step back, bro, and get everybody in the same place, getting that weekly email, you're, you're never going to, you're just going to, you're just going to be right here where you are scrambling around thinking it's because you're not making calls. You truth be known, you, you may not, you may not even need to make calls anymore. Um, you know, I don't know how many people you've got, but you've done 13 million a year, 6 million a year, 8 million a year. You know, I don't know how long you've been doing this or how many millions you've sold all together throughout your career. But I, I mean, you're, you could be to a point now where if you would have been doing the weekly email, you wouldn't even have to do calls. You could just handle all that servicing, all the stuff that you're saying that you need to do to get paid. That could be your full-time job. You don't even have to prospect. I mean, you, you may be in a spot where you don't even have to prospect anymore. You're thinking you need to, you can prospect your way out of this. Yeah. And and you're never going to prospect your way out of this. You know, you you've got to organize your database and start getting the weekly email popping. I mean, that you need to literally like not do anything until that is done and in place. You know, otherwise you're just going to be right here where you are forever. You're never going to break through cuz the getting to the 20 mil, 30 mil, 40 mil, 50 mil is from an accumulation of people that know who you are and never forget you. Yeah. It's not from making a bunch of calls that year, you know, or, you know, a bunch of, bunch of people, you know, a bunch of leads coming in. That That's not what gets you there. What gets you there is the accumulation of people that never forget you over the years. And that's just what you're missing. I mean, you, you need to get that locked in ASAP. I mean, before you do anything else, you know, and then, okay, let's see how many you got, you know, let's do the weekly email. Let's see what the open rate is, you know, then we can start optimizing and saying, okay, our database is 4,000, you know, let's put another couple years in to get it to 6,000, 7,000, you know, then we can start kind of like looking and seeing where we need to go from there. But your next step is to get there to know how many you got start the weekly email, get that consistent, see what the open rate is, and then start to try to figure out, okay, where do we go from here? Because your next move after that might be to start calling through the the 3,000 people or 2,000 or whatever you got, start calling yeah. back through that list and saying, hey, remember me? You know, last time you talked to them was five years ago. They don't remember you. They, they barely remember you, but they remember you enough to say, oh yeah, Carlos. And then yeah, you know, I, I, you know, oh, I got a couple of your emails and, you know, I want to do this. I want to do that, you know, and try to figure out what their future plans are in terms of real estate, yeah. you know, yeah. then you're rolling. So again, getting that database in order is, I mean, did you already know this or did you, 
did you think you could prospect your way out of this hole or did you, am I telling you stuff that you already knew? I, I just, I guess I got to hear it, you know, from, from you, but yeah, I've known like, you know, I've, I've heard it. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta be organized. You gotta, you know, get your database ready. And my thing is, I'm just going to sell, 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 keep selling, keep, you know, doing that. But then it gets to a point where like this, you know, this year, you know, it, it hasn't been the greatest year, but you know, people aren't selling as much or buying as much. So that, that's neither here nor there. Right. Yeah. Everybody's had a down year. All the big boys have had a down year. The people that were making like 30,000 last year, they may have doubled their business or tripled their business this year. People that are in those lower levels of building who are like really hungry and, you know, have what it takes, they doubled their business this year. They went from 50,000 to 100,000 or whatever. But people that were making 500, a million, 2 million, stuff like that, you know, they've probably had, you know, a down year. Maybe they had an even year. Some of them had a little better year, but nobody's like jumping by leaps and bounds. This is just a weird year. I mean, yeah. th this year is a weird year to keep your head above water is great. And then, it's kind of a transition year where it's like, okay, this is as bad as it gets. I mean, we're down under 2008 levels when it comes to transactions. And so this is one of those years where you kind of take a step back and evaluate your business and say, okay, you know, like where are the holes, this, this, this is kind of like the tide going out, you know, and you kind of see who's naked, right? Like yeah. you, you literally can figure out where the holes in your business is and you figured out where the holes in your business is. It's, it's, nurturing people that you know did business with you four years ago i mean that that's it because yeah they probably wouldn't be doing business this year but next year is going to be a different story bro you yeah. know and 2025 is going to be a different story next year is going to be busy dude it's going to be crazy because we're going to jump back to like 4.3 million transactions 4.5 something like that and like, that's a, that's a, that's a far cry from the 5 million that we're used to, but it's a big jump from where we are this year, you know, and, um, that's existing homes. So yeah. And January is going to be off the chain. So you need to take this moment where it's when it's slow and say, screw the like prospecting right now. Like I would even say a you know, you need to take this time where you have a moment because January is going to be too busy to do what you need to do. Like right now, when it's slow, get your database together, you know, and start getting that weekly email intact. In that way you can hit 2024 with a clean slate. Everybody's slowly remembering who you are again, you know, and you've kind of got this extra layer of business from the residual, you know, job that you've done over the past throughout your career plus all the stuff that kind of comes up then then you're cranking because you've got the business coming in from the database and the business coming in naturally that you're doing now that's what i'm saying like this will double your business because like right now you're just taking care of stuff that's in front of you and i'm saying yeah. let's take care of the stuff in front of you but also let's utilize deals from your database residual deals you know and so that that should double your business. So you should be able to go from like eight to 16 or even 20 next year. If you just do this one thing and you do it right now before the end of the year. Got it. Got it. So just get the database, weekly email. And then once that, that gets cranking back to prospecting and makes sense. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. You got to get your database in order, start getting the weekly, how many is in your database, right? Yeah. And then kind of utilize that for a second, call some of these people that you did deals with you haven't talked to in a while and just reconnect with them, right? And and kind of get a feeling of, I mean, you, you don't know which way you're going to go right there. You know, yeah. you might just live in your database. I don't know how big it is, what the response is. I don't know. You know, you might be able to just live in your database, you know? But maybe not. I don't know. See, we got to you got to get this step done before we can go to the next step. And we got to see, you know, what happens with this before we determine what that next step is. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, I got your uh, I got your template. So definitely going to look that over as and, um, you know, go from there.
makes it real easy because it's just plug and play you know stats yeah. restaurant deal news it's just run it back every month okay and how long does that take you now i, mean, I know you have probably someone working on it well but... like no i do it i do it myself okay. um like yesterday's i kind of redid some of it and uh I, I i went back and got a lot of data data from like closed sales and stuff so Normally it takes me like 15 minutes maybe, but yesterday I probably worked on it for a good 30 to 40 minutes just because I kind of, you know, I added some buttons and I um, looked up a bunch of data and stuff. So, but normally it takes me about 15 minutes because it's just a plug and play and I know what I'm doing and I just, I kind of have an idea because I'll, I'll see something throughout the week that's like, I'm like, oh, that, that'd be a good weekly email subject, you know, like I'll see an article or I'll hear something happening around town or I'll see a new restaurant or, you know, I'll get some stats from somewhere like my local board or, you know, University of Alabama sends out nice stats and so I'll normally see something through the week that, I, that I'm like, okay, I'll do that on my weekly email. And when I already know going into the weekly email, kind of what I'm going to put, what, what it's going to be about, it goes real fast. Okay. If I show up to the weekly email and I don't really know which way I want to go with it, sometimes that takes a little longer, not much actually, but, um, you know, but I just have to sit down and like clear my mind, focus on it, think about what would be valuable for my clients, you know? Like, what are they, what are they interested in? And I uh, try to be short, sweet to the point, one sentence, two sentences, you know, not these long ass paragraphs with little font. You can barely see it. Um, Cause you know, you and gotta every- think with, you gotta think with the email people literally click on, we on, on sales emails, literally one second, they click on it and then they're out. If they can't see right there when they click on it, what they need, what they want, they're out. If they have to scroll and scroll and scroll to find like the stuff, the goods, they're out. I mean, you got to think that's why Amazon and Uber and, you know, Apple and Facebook and all these companies have been so successful because it saves people time. If, if you can save people time, if you can like, if they can just see the the subject and be like, oh, click and then get what they need and get out of there you know, that that's going to be the most successful emails. You know, when people put these videos in their emails that are like two and three minutes, that that's killing your email success rate because people don't want to spend two or three minutes. They want to be able to see what they want. You know, they want to see new listings, boom, click on it, scan through it. They're out, you know, yeah. um, you know, the deal, the, the, the deal of the month, it's, it's whatever they click on it. They click, they see a few pictures, boom, they're out. They want to get in and out. So think about that when you're making your emails, you know, it needs to be really sharp, you know, to the point, quick. Mm -hmm. And what's, what do you suggest as far as an open rate? What do you think is a successful open rate in our business? Uh, 20 to 40%, you know, just anywhere in there, you know, is good. Um, Then you probably have people opting out as well. So that's part of the business, I guess, right? people that don't want to do business with you, you know, if you, if you're, if you don't send the email because you're worried about people opting out, you're literally catering to the people who don't want to do business with you. Meanwhile, not giving the people that do want to do business with you, the luxury of getting information from you. So you're like, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're catering to the people that don't want to do business with you and you're screwing the people that want to do business with you. And you're, and you're like literally cutting that opportunity off by not doing it or worrying about people that unsubscribe. I mean, people that unsubscribe, they're not going to, those people, if they're going to unsubscribe from an email, they're not going to buy a property from you. Yeah. You know, so see ya. Yeah. You know, but the people that don't unsubscribe and open it every week and enjoy it and appreciate it, they're going to buy stuff from you. You know, and that's why you're doing it for them, not for the people that unsubscribe. Makes sense. Okay. And, and two, like unsubscribers will unsubscribe from a weekly email, a monthly email, a yearly email. They unsubscribe from everything. It, it's not like every week that that's the problem. I mean, they get spam ma- mail. Every, that people, I get, I get, a, I get hundreds of spam emails every day. Yeah. You know, much less like one email a week from my trusted agent. That's not spam. It's actually good information. 
you know? So I had a question about your phone call. So the circle prospecting expired. How often do you maybe spend, let's say one person isn't picking up, right? Do you, do you suggest texting them? Or I'll just never, keep, keep I'll them never moving. call them ever again because because now I'm wasting a dial on someone who already didn't answer and chances are they're not going to answer again and the chances of them answering goes way down you know when I know they're not going to answer the first time the chances they open they answer a second time is you know I, I know for pretty pretty sure because now they're just like the just like the unsubscribers these are the non-answers you know yeah. they're they're habitual non-answers they're habitual unsubscribers and you just, you can't chase ghosts. You just can't, you know, so you're wasting a dial on, on that person that you could have spent that dial on somebody that might answer. Right. And so I want to go with the highest probability of an answer, not the lowest probability of an answer because, and people are like, well, it's just a dial. Well, these dials add up. You can you only have so many dials and, and plus we're busy. So it reduces the amount of dials, you know, and the time we have to make calls. Like every call session needs to be incredibly um, you know, optimized for, you know, efficiency. Uh, you know, for the probability of of conversation. And um, you know, like if you like if you if you ran that type of business where you try to call people that don't answer, you know, let's say you waste like, you know, 20, 30 dials a week trying to call people back that didn't answer. Well, how many is that in a year? 52 times 30, right? That's a, that's what, um, that's, it's a ridiculous amount, right? Where all, where you think about that many calls in a year to, to, to brand new leads where you have a 10% pickup rate, you know, that could be the difference in you doubling your business in, or not, you know, is just being very mindful. Of, yeah. Being very mindful about optimizing, you know, the efficiencies behind what you're doing. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So what I got out of it really, I mean, that's this great information. So I appreciate it again, you know, the email seems to be, you know, what I need to get done. Um, get organizing the database basically, because it makes sense. I'm, I'm, I'm a salesperson. I'm not running a business. Yeah. Um, just chasing, just chasing, like you said, just chasing the sale, the next sale. And you're just going to do um, that until the day you die, unless you put together the system where you start to get the residual business and you, you could, you will double your business next year by doing that. Um, and so 50% of your business will be just the business coming in as, as you know, from you being a sales guy and the other 50% will come in residually from your database. But the next year it'll be more like 65, 35. And then the next year it'll be more like 75, 25. And eventually you get to a year where it's like 95, five, and you're like, screw it. I'm not going to do the sales part anymore. I'm just going to live off the database. That's where 95% of my business has come from anyway. And then you just, yeah. now you're not even prospecting anymore. That's the progression of it when you do it this way. You get to okay. a place where you don't have to prospect anymore. Now you're okay. just living off the database. You make the same amount every year, whether it's, you know, 500, a million, whatever it is, you maintain it but you're not prospecting. So now you have time that you used to prospect and plus you have better systems in place with transaction coordinators and assistants and stuff to get the deals done. You're literally your effort per deal goes down. Okay. At that point. And everybody that calls you is doing a deal with you. They're not interviewing three agents. Yeah. And you're, you, you now can take, you now have a lot of time on your hands because you're not prospecting and the deals are easier so now you can take that time and your money and, you know, get into other things, you know, start investing into real estate or, you know, build other businesses or, you know, spend more time with the family, whatever it is that you want to do, you'll have that luxury at that time. Yeah, that is ultimately the end goal. I don't want to be doing this forever. I don't want to, you know. Yeah. So. All right. Good. Um, do, 
would you recommend where to get it, everything organized? Uh, a program that you might use that you know. I would just put comes... everybody in constant contacts. You know, to contact. do the weekly email. Just put everybody in there to get the weekly email. Okay. That's okay, it. Great. That's all you need. All right. Well, uh, I'm looking forward to the uh, to the plan that you put out on the new website. So, um, I know I got to get this done, but obviously I want to do that. Do the uh, silver membership. Um, I just signed up the other day. I could...